everyone, welcome back to the NFA Review Channel. We have another suppressor review from Enfield Rifle Company. If you guys remember, they were on my channel uh, last year with their Novus, which is a multi-caliber, multi-use suppressor that you guys really seem to like. And now they have a brand new model, the SPX-30. So this is gonna be more leaning towards rifle use only, okay? So the Novus was more for handgun that you could use on a rifle. This is just for rifles, specifically precision shooting and of course your AR type platform. So today we're gonna to shoot it on 308 and 300 blackout. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the new SPX-30 and then we'll go ahead and hit that range and see what it sounds like. Right. Now I do have a, I don't know, if it's not pre-production, but this is so new. This is like one of the first ones they have sent out. My box didn't have a manual or decals or anything. I'm sure yours will, but it does have an extra wipe and some nifty little 3D printed mounts. Let's set the box aside here. Okay, and you have a little 3D printed mount that says Enfield Rifle Co. on it. So you can put it on your desk and look cool at work. So set that aside and let's get down to business on the new SPX-30. It comes in a overall length of 7.25 inches, a diameter of 1.5 inches, and a total weight of 10.5 ounces. So for a 30 caliber rifle can, pretty light at 10.5 ounces, especially when considering what it's constructed of. So the outer tube here is constructed of grade nine titanium, and then your rear direct thread mount your front cap and your entire baffle stack is 17.4 heat treated stainless steel. As far as the finish, they have a very nice satin black Cerakote on there. This is the high temperature version. So just like the um, Novus that I already reviewed, very, very nicely applied finish, not gloss, not matte, kind of in between, looks really good when on the end of your firearm. Now, as far as firing schedule goes, they said it is full auto rated with 5.56 and that they tested it with four mags back to back with no pausing in between, just changing mags out as fast as they could, and they didn't have any problems, so it is warranted for full auto use. Now, typically, four mags, that's your general loadout. You know, those of you that run and gun and play on the weekends, if you have, you know, a plate carrier, you're gonna have typically three rifle mags, and then maybe on top of that, three of your secondary pistol mags, and then, of course, you have the one mag in the gun, so you're running four mags normally as it is. So if you wanted to happy switch it all the way through, looks like the new SPX-30 is capable. As far as the warranty, lifetime, should you guys have any problems, blow the can up. Uh, they will cover you guys and hook you up with a new suppressor. So good to hear about that. Now, as far as decibel reduction, this was metered at the shooter's ear, so not the muzzle, so at the ear where it counts, with a 16 inch 308, it averaged 133 decibels. And with a 300 blackout, eight inch barrel, it metered in at 124 decibels at the shooter's right ear. So very, very cool, especially considering it metered in at 124 decibels at the ear on 300 blackout. It tells me that this is a low back pressure can, which is nice to hear. Nobody likes getting gas face. Now, as far as the price comes in a retail price of $859, so $859. So actually very competitive in this segment for a uh, you know multi-caliber use, 30 caliber suppressor uh, under the $1,000 mark is pretty cool, especially because it comes with a mount to begin with. Um, now, of course, if you are a gold member on Patreon, you get an additional 20% off. So you can actually go through me and order direct and get an additional 20% off that 859. So very, very uh, good looking prospect there. Now, as far as user serviceability, I just uh, remove the front cap. You'll see again, this is a 17.4 heat treated with the finish on it. And then you'll just slide the baffles out on the table. Easiest way I found and I'll set the tube aside for right now. So what you have here is a five baffle system. Again, machined from 17.4 heat treated steel. Now your first baffle is a cone type, no notch caught in it, okay? So just a straight cone baffle. And then your subsequent baffles have 
your typical U-notch that you've seen here on my channel, very common design. And one, two, three, four. Now, you probably notice five baffles in a suppressor that comes in at seven and a quarter inches long. That gives you a very large blast chamber area, which is probably helping with the back pressure because it's letting a lot of expansion happen before it backs up at that first baffle. So I'll show some close-ups here and you can see just how far back that first blast baffle is set. Now, for the secret sauce here, this is a wipe capable suppressor. You don't need it. The numbers they metered with were not with the wipe, so with 300 blackout, it can get pretty quiet. Um, now, as far as wipes, from what I remember right now, the ATF or the AFT, as some of you like to call them, um, still have this stupid law on the books that they flip-flopped on 80 freaking times. So I believe with wipes right now, as it stands right now today, this can change in five seconds because they change their mind every five seconds. To swap a wipe out, you either would have to send this back to them to swap the wipe out or bring it to your local FFL SOT if they're a manufacturer. If your SOT is a manufacturer, they can do a wipe swap for you. I'm an RP on more than one uh, class three manufacturer, so I can do it myself. Um, but for your, those of you out there that are buying this to add to their collection and stamp it, obviously you're gonna want to uh, figure that out. Now, as far as the wipes, it, it doesn't need the wipe, but it adds that little aspect of super backyard Hollywood quietness, okay? Now the design is very, very simple. Let me use my high-tech white pusher tool here. <laughs> Pull out of my toolbox. Here's the white, just your basic white material that can be found on mcmastercar.com. Once again, that is mcmastercar.com. You can find a similar material of this on that website, order it in big sheets, get a punch on the same website that's strangely the same size as this and hammer out wipes. Anyway, to use the wipe, all you do is you push it down into the baffle and that's it. So I thought that was a little interesting because there's no wipe retention system in place like on other suppressors we've seen where they sandwich the wipe in between another threaded portion, right, to keep it from moving. I called up ERC and asked them about it and they said through all their testing, they didn't find degradation of accuracy with the wipe with it moving forward. Meaning you will see a loss in accuracy when a bullet hits something, okay? So you will see a loss in accuracy when it hits the wipe. But that's not what they're saying. They're saying the fact that the wipe moved a quarter of an inch on the first round and you know, sticks itself to the inside there of that end cap because there's no retention system in place, meaning it can move when it's shot. They didn't notice any change in accuracy, any loss of uh, wipe life, anything like that. So there's, in their mind, they're like, why are we going to machine some sort of complex holder here that's gonna add uh, complexity when cleaning because you're gonna have multiple threaded units here at the front that's gonna get fouled up and dirty. And of course, you'll add weight to the end of the muzzle because it's at the very end of the suppressor. So they're like, hey, let's just make it super simple so the end user can just throw a wipe in there if they want and uh, it makes it super quiet. So that's pretty neat. As far as cleaning, super simple guys. Don't throw tubes in ultrasonic cleaners because you'll ruin your finish. This is grade nine titanium. It'd probably handle it just fine, but you'll ruin that beautiful finish that they took so long to apply nicely. Now, as far as your baffles, 17.4, Heat tray stainless steel, obviously remove the wipe before you throw it in there. And uh, just throw it in there with your favorite cleaner. A couple cycles in the USC and I'll get it squeaky clean. Now, I don't clean a lot of my cans. Uh, I definitely don't clean rifle cans because it gets so hot in there. Typically you don't have a buildup of fouling, especially 300 blackout, 308, 65 Creedmoor. Um, you know, this, this design of baffles does have these holes machined into it that you see. I'll show you some close-up shots, but um, that's just to help it lighten the load, okay? It doesn't need to be that structurally strong on the sides. Uh, so you will have carbon embedding itself in those holes and against the tube wall on the inside of the suppressor. That being said, 
it's a rifle can, it gets hot, you're not going to be having a lead buildup, you're going to have some carbon buildup. And from my experience, you're going to be able to push these out pretty relatively easy, even with long shooting strings in between uh, servicing it at home and cleaning it. So I really wouldn't worry too much about these holes. You should be able to, I mean, if it is really locked in there, you get a nice wooden dowel and bang them out, and it should be fine. Um, I don't clean rifle cans, so I'll never know. <laughs> so as far as reassembly, obviously your cone baffle, you need to have that in the front. And then just try to line up the notches. I found on pretty much every suppressor made, if you line up the notches as close as you can, it will save your accuracy and uh, minimize point of impact shift. So we have those lined up. Oh, see, I already started to do it. Make sure you don't accidentally put your wipe baffle somewhere in the middle of the stack. You want that at the end. You put that bad boy in the middle, you're going to have problems later because it's going to cause some wonky things to happen with that round when it goes through. So the wipe's at the end. Put the stack down on the table like so. Your writing is going to be at the muzzle end and you want your cone facing the projectile. So just slide it on like so. I always line up the notch with the writing so I can orient it each time I clean it so my point of impact shift doesn't change. You'll see the wipe in there, throw your end cap on, and you're good to go. Compress it nice and tight, no rattling, you're good to go. Now as far as the mount, of course, thank God, Infield Rifle Company decided to use an industry standard thread pitch, which is 1.375 by 24. So if you have your favorite mounting systems and chemos and all that fun stuff, this can use it. So as long as your adapter system is 1.375 by 24 thread pitch, you can run it on their cans. So that's pretty cool. They also have, of course, uh, direct thread adapters available. It does ship with the 5.8 by 24, which you can use on 300 blackout and 308. A little close up here of all that space I was talking about earlier again. Pretty cool, you have a very large blast chamber, low pressure, good to go. So, I think that pretty much wraps it up here in the studio, guys. I mean, pretty simple design, user serviceable, and definitely seems pretty robust. I'm glad to see that it is full auto rating, and of course carries that lifetime warranty. So, I believe that wraps it up. I'm gonna grab a 308, a 300 blackout, and let's put some rounds down range, and I'll go broke in the process. Let's go ahead and get to it. Sounds amazing. Steel. Steel. Dude, you guys hear the white gas off? Let me shoot the steel. All right, shoot the berm. That is so sick. Steel. Berm. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Dude. Literally sounds like letting air out of a tire. No, it's quieter than letting air out of a tire. You hear the firing pin snap the primer and then air escaping slowly from the wipe and then a thud down range. There is no gunshot. There's nothing. That's legit. That is legit. 
It's been a long time since I heard a can like that. Uh, the last one I remember that shocked me like that was the Energetic Armament Vox, if you guys remember that video. So, uh, pretty awesome. Let's see what it sounds like on 308. how loud that is. Steel? God, that steel's loud. All right, berm. Five rounds, 308 with a wipe. Hopefully I'm in frame here. This is a long gun. I'm gonna step back a little bit. Nice. Steel. And berm. Berm. All right, guys, so because ammunition is scarce and expensive these days, we're gonna kill two birds with one stone in this next section. So I have my camera down range, just to the left of the target. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna shoot the 300 blackout and the 308 unsuppressed, suppressed, and then suppressed with wipe. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be actually shooting groups on here at the same time so we can check for any point of impact shift. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, this was the unsuppressed throw weight. That was my bad dog. I totally could have stacked all three. I pulled it a little bit, but that's actually two shots. One, two, so hella tight, but look what I had to do. Anyway, so that is the first group. I was aiming uh, here, because the rifle is sighted in for a little further away. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the suppressor on, see what it does. All right, yes, that will do. That will do. So that is 308 with the suppressor added. No point of impact shift. Remember, this was my flyer from earlier. I had two rounds here and I just stacked two more right on top of them. How freaking awesome is that? I was really not expecting to see that, to be honest. So kudos to Enfield Rifle Company on that one. That is, that is nice. I know it's only three round group, but damn it, ammo's expensive. Let's go ahead and throw a wipe on. All right, and with the wipe, I did feel I pulled one of them. I think it's that one, uh, but the rest, 
are in the same holes. So uh, that was a used wipe. That was the wipe I used for the profile sound shots earlier. So I wanted to see if a used wipe with a hole already punctured through it would change the point of impact and it does not. So what I wanna do now is put a brand new wipe on the 300 Blackout and see what it does. Now I will go ahead and say, disclaimer, great host for suppressor, not exactly a tack driver, the Ruger American 300 Blackout. So it's not gonna shoot as good as my 308 that I have all set up all nifty 50 over there, okay? So just be forewarned, I'm gonna do my best I can do for shooting. Uh, I'll probably aim somewhere up here and we'll shoot for a group there, but uh, can't wait to hear what it sounds like again, especially from down here. All right, that was unsuppressed 300 blackout. Here's our first three round string. Not bad shooting off a camera bag with a uh, non-target gun. Let's go ahead and throw the suppressor on it without the wipe, see what it does. Okay, I actually surprised myself on that one. No point of impact shift. Shot pretty good for not shooting in over a month. So here's the other string of 300 blackout with the suppressor with no wipe. So take a good mental image of this group. Okay, I'm gonna throw the wipe on it and see what it does. Remember, this is a virgin wipe. There's no hole in it. So it's definitely gonna do something. I'm very curious to what that is. All right, I don't know if you guys can hear that from uh, all the way down here, but the gas escaping from that fresh wipe is super cool. So, first shot was somewhere in here. Second shot, I pulled it a little bit right, and then the third shot was somewhere over here. So, didn't really deviate the, the point of impact uh, as much as I thought it would, to be honest. I mean, I even pushed the wipe all the way into the baffle, so when I shot it, it actually moved, you know, a half inch and seated itself to the inside of the front cap. So, I mean, you know, maybe that's why that shot went a little right, but I, I definitely felt like I pulled it a little bit. I mean, hell, even if it did shift it, you're talking an inch right. Um, I also gotta give some credit to Ruger. That gun shoots a lot better than I gave it credit for. So uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. All right, guys, ending thoughts. First things first, it is hot AF out here. It's like a hundred degrees and equivalent humidity of walking through a freaking swimming pool. So Florida, summertime, not cool. Uh, secondly, that suppressor sounded great. It really did. I have to give kudos to Enfield Rifle Company on that. Uh, for such a basic looking design, definitely hit way above its pay grade, especially with the 20% off on Patreon. You're talking a very, very affordable, full auto rated 30 caliber suppressor. Um, with the wipe, more than Hollywood quiet, like, shoot in your front yard mulch bed while a neighbor walks a dog right on your sidewalk type quiet that's how quiet it is with the wipe with subsonic 300 blackout with the 308 uh 
it's supersonic round. Like I said in the studio, it's kind of a waste to use a wipe with a supersonic round. It's just, you're not gonna get the same ooh-ah effect. You're not gonna get the Hollywood effect because the, the sound of the round breaking the sound barrier kind of ruins the experience. So don't waste it on anything but subsonic loads. Um, point of impact shift, nil, there was none. That was kind of unexpected, uh, especially through that virgin wipe. I, I was certain it was gonna do something wacky. Uh, it didn't, so your mileage may vary, but it's not like I was shooting it on a target gun. I was shooting on just a typical ranch gun you would keep in your truck, throw a suppressor on it, keep, keep a wipe on it, and you're good to go. Now, as far as sponsors for today's video, I wanna give a huge shout out to, to a warehouse. Uh, they sent us some ammo for today's video, and as you know, it's pretty scarce these days, very expensive, so very cool to have them on board for an ammunition sponsor. They're not gonna, you know, supply me with everything that I need, but it, it, any, any bit helps, trust me. It gets pretty crazy expensive out here to film these videos. Um, they are also a sponsor on my Patreon. They give 7% off site-wide for all you guys that are interested. Head to my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash NFA review, and go to the gold tier and you'll see them on there. If you sign up, shoot me a PM and I'll get you set up with that promo code and any other promo codes that you guys want for the companies that sponsor us on Patreon. So hope you guys enjoyed the video today. The can sounded amazing on both three, uh, 308 and 300 blackout, wiped and unwiped. It actually performed way, way, way above its pay grade. So huge, 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 huge kudos to Enfield Rifle Company for that. Uh, very cool to have them on board and I can't wait to see what they have next. Until next time, please click that like button. It does help here on the channel. And of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you next time.